Welcome in to the DNVR playoff previews. This is the first of an eight video series for round one where we will be breaking down all of the playoff matchups, both both East and West. I was about to give you credit for getting through the I little bit of a tongue got twister. There, and then, I, I, yeah. I, was, I had my compliment queued up and then you blew it. That's typical Rudo right yep, there. Classic, classic uh, Rudo. This one, the first matchup decided, it felt like it's been decided for a month. And it's the same matchup as last year. Mm. Tampa, Toronto in round one. Toronto being the higher seed. Yep. Uh, uh, let, let's start with Toronto because we've all heard all the takes a million times with this team. Is this the year? Is, can they finally get out of the first round? Can this core finally do it? This, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, of the first round, I think this is the matchup I'm most intrigued by and I'm most interested in seeing uh, because I think this is the best position that Toronto has ever been to not only finally win a round, but I, I, I think they've got a team on paper that can truly contend for a, a Stanley Cup. Mm. Um, it's going to be interesting. We were all talking about it uh, a little bit earlier in the day. You got Kyle Dubas managing for his job. Sheldon Keefe also on an expiring deal. This core... This isn't just like kind of prolonged Maple Leaf history. This core now has a track record of blowing it in the first round. Like I was going to say fizzling out, but it's literally no, just been it's actively blowing, blowing, yeah. blowing it in round one. Um, I think they're more well equipped to to get over that hump this year, but uh, they've got a really tough test and we'll get a little bit more into the actual matchup. But Toronto, I think they have a chance. They, they have to break through the barrier that's between their ears. They're good. That, they have a good offense. True. They have a good defense. I don't know if they have a good goaltender, and I don't know which goaltender it's going to be. I don't know if he, they can stay healthy there. You know, the they've had injuries at the position all season. Do you really trust Ilya Samsonov? Me? No. Like, it's it's interesting to me that they are now leaning on this guy that Washington invested a first-round pick in and – Turned over the position to, and then he didn't so earn it. Yeah. Just Thanks. kind of yeah. watched him fizzle out, and then just moved on. Like they just let the let the guy leave for free, and and then went and spent a bunch of money on Darcy Kemper, mm -hmm. and that's the organization that knew him the best. So, uh, pretty scathing indictment, honestly. And now he's in this position a year later. Could be a redemptive story. It could be more of the same. I think it's interesting. There's lots of parallels to draw between a 2019-2020 Avs team, which, like Toronto, to me, this is one of the best teams, I think, that has a chance of getting out of the first round than I've seen. And I know that there's heartbreak linked to that Avs team of that year because that's one of the best Avs teams I've also seen. So it's not a guarantee, but this is some of the best construction I've seen for Toronto in a long while. And I think they have the best shot of it for that reason, but not necessarily the sole reason, because Tampa is a formidable opponent. It's a well-coached team that has been here before. It's why I think the addition of Ryan O'Reilly is going to help a Toronto team in this stage of things, but they have a lot to contend with when their opponent is so well-versed in this exact scenario. Well, it's, it, you know, you go back to the matchup from last year, and that was the part to me where it really felt like it came apart for Toronto was kind of like what you were saying. When, when Tampa got their backs against the wall, had their backs against the wall, that was when they played their best. And as soon as things started to slide on Toronto, uh, you know, we were talking earlier off air about the five on three goal that Tampa scored to, to tie up game six. And I remember there was a shot that just kind of went down the Toronto bench and you could see it on their faces. Here we go again. Here we go again. They knew it. And having a guy like Ryan O'Reilly, who has won a Stanley Cup, who's been through four rounds, who's had to play with his back against the wall, I'm not saying it makes the difference. I'm not saying now because you have that, you're going to be able to get through it. But guys like that help when, look, yeah, they've all been here before, but none of them have, none of them have actually broken through. None of these players have gotten through to the other side. And, oh, by the way, you got John Tavares sitting there who – has been deep in the playoffs and yeah i, I mean i think the thing is their forward core is pretty unimpeachable right 
Marner, Nylander, Matthews, Tavares. You add O'Reilly to that conversation. Uh, Assuming they show up in the first round, which is another problem. <laughs> Their forward core is just too good for a team that has not gotten out of the first round. I will put it that way. I don't think their defense is particularly bad either. Led by Morgan Riley, you have... Sort of. uh, I get you get down the list there and and things get a little bit sketchier, but that is a team that, on paper, should get out of the first round. Yeah. The question marks surrounding goaltending are a fair call-out. And this is where we can also get into the Tampa part of this conversation. The one spot where you definitely don't have any questions about Tampa Bay is Andre Vasilevsky in net. Yep. The dude is a absolute monster. Yes, he lost to the Avs in the cup final last year. He also <laughs> has a goals against average of like less than one in elimination games. Yeah. <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> yeah. I, no, he, he, I mean, he's, he's the ultimate... Trump card. Yep. Ah, this is a close game. We've got Vasilevsky, so. Cool. Well, and that's a guy that gets better as the series goes on. Because you saw him early in the Toronto series last year, early in the Colorado wasn't series great. last year. Just wasn't very good. Got lit up a couple of New times. York. Uh, and then as the series goes on, he's just like, I'm giving up one a game. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and so it's... Shifting it to the Tampa side, this really is part of the reason why it's the most intriguing matchup to me. I, I I said it through every round of the playoffs last year, said it at the beginning of the beginning of the year this year, and to me it's still true. The East has their fourth shot at knocking off Tampa here. No one's been able to do it in three years. So right now, they are still the team to beat. Like they still are top dog in the East until anybody proves we can beat these guys four out of seven. It, uh, while, while I think that is still true right now, because again, no, no one's done it. This is the first time I'm looking at them saying, Oof, they might be in some trouble. It, it is interesting. The top of their forward core, you know, it's not that bad compared to Toronto's when you have Kucherov, Point, Stamkos. They've got a lot going on there. You look at the defense. Sergachev is having and a Brandon breakout Hagel year. Is a, Hagel has jumped up this year. A 30-goal yep. season. Anthony Sorelli is one of the premier two-way centers in the uh, uh, in the NHL. And, like, they're, they're, they're forward. To, you know, Nick Paul has been a great addition to them as a, as a really good two-way guy. Like, they continue to just do what they do in finding guys that fit who they are, fit their identity, and be quality contributors for them. And then... Mm-hmm. This is where I worry that they don't have an Toronto doesn't have enough to overcome that small gap plus Vasilevsky. And with the when when Tampa Bay's back is against the wall, they sell out. Yep. In a best of seven, they say, We're gonna trust our defense. We're going to completely sell out to stop offensive teams. Teams that can score with us. We are gonna give everything that we can to the defensive side and we will capitalize on mistakes. When they have a bad pinch, we'll score on a two-on-one. When they have, you know, they make a mistake, they uh, they take a penalty, the five-on-three. Mm-hmm. They 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 say we may only get one shot at it, but we're going to score on that one shot. And then they go out and they do it, and they've consistently done this. And that was the only way they kept up with the Avalanche in the Cup final was they completely sold out, stopped playing offense, and said we're just going to try to. Can well, you beat us two to one? We're gonna, yeah. we're gonna, we're gonna rely on Vasilevsky to outplay your goalie, and we're just going to, we're just going to play mistake free defense. And if they get, if Toronto gets into that kind of series, that's where I worry about them. Mm-hmm. My other concern is I don't know how Tampa Bay does that without Ryan McDonough. He was an enormous part of their ability to play that kind of game, and you know Ian Cole's had a really good long career. Uh, he, he can't munch he's minutes not, for you anymore. He's not yeah. Ryan McDonough yeah. of the last few years in Tampa Bay. That that downgrade there I think is significant. And I think the downgrade even going further into the defense uh, is pretty meaningful where, you know, a lot of Nick Perbix minutes this year. Uh, Victor Hedman has has started to show the age a little bit. Yeah. Some of this is buoyed by Mikhail Sergachev being phenomenal. He's been amazing this year. I, I also just wonder, sorry, Megan, I, I wonder how much of it isn't even necessarily like starting to show the age, but like these dudes have played a lot of hockey. 
Yeah, you're, uh, it's it's a fair point that they might just be saving it for this. Well, well, well I'm not even saying that, but like it, I, by the I, end of this playoff run, out? in in what will be four years, they will essentially have played an entire extra season of playoff. They'll play an entire extra season, and like we saw up close, how short that off season is. Tampa didn't win. They didn't get the summer celebrations. They had the same summer. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now they had two summers before that where they got plenty of celebrations. <laughs> so you don't feel bad for them, but. That's a short summer. Megan, is there something you want to circle back to quickly here before we get to predictions? It's what these teams represent. They each hold an antidote to the other teams. What is going to make them pose a problem, essentially. In what Toronto has is the high-octane offense. And the antidote is what Tampa Bay has in Vasilevsky. And then what they have in their depth is a strong team defense. Toronto, that is. Um, That is... Also, though, a bottom six that doesn't produce to the same way that the entirety of the Toronto forward group does. Tampa they, or Toronto? Sorry, Toronto. Their, their entire forward group produces, whereas what Tampa's forward group does well is team defense, and, and that's the execution. And so these two things are going to be battling one another. Um, and this is where I think you're going to see one of these two things, because like the high octane offense in each of their top six is pretty formidable, right? For sure. But it's going to be how Tampa has demonstrated that they're able to shut teams down line by line, the depth. Because, like, they take a hit in losing some, like, Tanner Janot. I don't know what the injury status is through the playoffs, yeah, to be fair. Yeah, the injuries are a big thing with them. That's um, my other well. thing, too. Yeah. However, their depth is still good. They are still going to be a shutdown team line by line for that reason. And so even though Toronto has this high-profile forward group that is going to pose a problem – there is still Vasilevsky in that to contend mm-hmm. with. And I think that's what is going to be interesting is which team has the more powerful antidote to solve the other team's problem. I think it's a, a an interesting point to build off of as well as you look at, you, you brought up Toronto's, like their defense as a whole is good, but it doesn't, they don't have a top pairing that you look at and say, that's going to get us through a series. Like you look at Colorado. Devontae easy lock in there yeah you know Victor Hedman has found his way to be that guy consistently for Tampa Bay for years now you mentioned Morgan Riley at the top with their defense and it's like it's not much of a defender is he really suited for that role if if Toronto's fate hangs in the balance of how their top pairing does against Nikita Kucherov's <laughs> line. You don't love that. Yeah. Is that a matchup that they can survive, especially with the, with the what looks like disadvantage in goal? Exactly. Because yeah. they're both their decors have like at the top prominent figures. Mm-hmm. However, there's some question marks then in yeah. the second, third pairings. And I think that's where the team defense of mm. Tampa is going to be an added strength mm-hmm. with Vasilevsky in mind. Yeah, they they they're very comfortable winning that way. I don't know that Toronto is. I don't. I I mean, how could they be? Sam Sonov has never proven it. I'll just say that these they're just they're just stylistic opposites. These two teams, and and, and I mean, it's not that unlike kind of what you saw in the Western Conference Final last year, where those were both very high skill, high octane teams. One of the teams had the ability to say, cool, we're going to batten down the hatches a bit here and, you know, kind of ride this into the night defensively. There was, and the there other- was a reason game two was like a three nothing snoozer. <laughs> right. right. And, and the other team just didn't have that ability to do it to the point that you guys are making. Mm-hmm. I worry about that with Toronto. Is, is Tampa going to come out and say, look, we know we're outgunned because of our injuries. We know we're tired. We're just going to slow this down. And if mm-hmm. you want to beat us coming through this muddy ass neutral zone, Fine, and but, we don't, but we don't know if you can. We can, yeah. we can talk about it all we want, but it's time to make the predictions. I, I'll go first. I'll let you guys think for a second. I'm taking Tampa in seven. Me too. I'm just going <laughs> to X2. Now, I think I would not be at all shocked if this goes Toronto in six sure. by any stretch of the imagination. I, For Toronto's sake, I hope they don't have to play another game seven. <laughs> I hope they can just... Take care of a series win without having to slay that demon because I don't think they can, yeah. especially with Vasilevsky on the other side of the ice. I just, I don't know what it is, but this core with Toronto just can't get out of their own way when it comes to game sevens specifically. And I feel like 
this happens sometimes. We're like, you don't ever get over the hump. You know, we've seen it. Washington finally, you know, broke through and did it. Obviously, the abs last year. But, like, there are plenty of groups that never get over the hump and, and, and figure it out. This could just be one of those. <laughs> What's funny is we're talking about, you're, you're talking about, like, uh, like the prime predators. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're talking about, Vancouver. like, the Marlo Thornton Sharks, the Sedin Twin uh, Canucks. Uh, you know, like there are examples. This is a team that hasn't gotten out of the first round. Right, yeah. right, right. Not yeah. like, hey, they've won some rounds. They they haven't some even of started teams, climbing the hill yet. Some really, of those teams <laughs> made cup finals and <laughs> yeah. lost. Where you were like, ah, oh, it's too bad. Tor- Toronto has not taken the first step there. Yeah, they haven't gotten into a deep, deep into a in, into a playoff run. Their playoff run has always ended after two weeks. Yep. Yeah, and and so I, I I'm with you, Rudo. I I'm going to take Tampa in seven. But this really is a series that anything from either team winning it in five to either team winning it in seven, Could none of the results well would the really table. like yeah. shock me. I just think that whichever team goes down in this one, they're, they're going down swinging. Either the Maple Leafs are going down swinging, knowing that next year probably looks dramatically different, or Tampa is going down swinging saying, all right, we're finally here. We're finally at like the, the, the last the round. Yep. And we're going to give you everything we have on, on our way out of the ring. Uh, I think this is going to be a super fun series. Uh, I'm, I'm giving the edge to Tampa because how, wh- why wouldn't you? It's hard to bet against history. Predictions from the couch? It's hard to bet against John Cooper. But we didn't even mention John Cooper. <laughs> that's honestly the one of the biggest reasons I don't like to bet against Tampa is because of how well coached they are. But I also feel like this needs some diversity so i'm gonna say toronto and seven and seven all right so they they slay multiple demons you know why too i'm inspired by what the abs have been able to do with their second round demon on their back and Mm. and being able to shed that and i love a redemptive goalie arc if i believe in it for georgiev i want to believe in it for toronto so if this is (laughs) the fresh change of scenery he needed i'm sure very upbeat toronto winning in seven would kind of start to feel like okay, maybe they could make a run at yeah. that point. I think if they if they beat Tampa in seven, if it's Boston in round two, they're going to beat Boston. All right, I know he still hasn't decided I at this really very moment. Man. He's about to make up some numbers. I really haven't. Um, no, I think I'm going to go with Toronto in six. I said after last year, I like that. I said after last year, I'm never picking this core again. <laughs> I'm never picking Toronto to win another series. I'm done believing. So I'm I'm reeled you back. I'm gonna pick in. I'm gonna pick them in six. I tell you, talking through this, I felt comfortable picking Toronto walking in today. We talked through it, and I'm like, oh my god, I don't want to pick against Vasilevsky. Yeah. More than anything else, I don't want to pick against Vasilevsky, Samsonov, and Vasilevsky. That matchup in particular, I don't want to pick against Vasi. But I, I do just think that. It feels like it's like it has to give, right? It, like that's what it feels it, like. It just feels like this is a turning of the page. It feels like the Avs dented that armor. Just they they enough, kind of yeah. pierced the veil a little bit. And I I think that the injuries at the bottom of Tampa Bay's forward core, not knowing what's going on with those, make me really nervous. Because them being able to reliably roll out you know, Pierre Edward Belmar and Pat Maroon or whatever for, you know, those types of guys for years at the bottom of their lineup where they know they're they're not getting scored on. They can rely on, hey, they're not going to get scored on. And if they get something, cool. But they're not getting scored on. And uh, not knowing what the status there is, I, I really, I think the Ryan O'Reilly addition, as you mentioned earlier, to, 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 to Toronto – is a huge thing for me as well Mm -hmm. that I think that he gives them an extra element that they were really lacking. Never had. And I think that I I just, I, it kind of just in the same way that I thought this was true for the, for Colorado at times last year. I just think this is their time. I just think that this is that, that Toronto is really, really well built top to bottom. They're playing really quality hockey. I, I will worry about round two and round two gets gets here, but I I do think that they they can take Tampa and I'm uh, I mean I'm gonna go with that. There you go. I, I don't think between Toronto's roster and where Tampa is sitting right now, you're never gonna be in a better position to do it. Yeah, 
Uh, if, if Toronto's ever going to do it, it's yeah. now it's or never. Be it does right feel now. like now or it, never. It does, yeah. Uh, so Tampa and seven, couch Toronto six, Toronto seven, could go either way. Uh, we do have plenty more of these videos coming your way. Seven other series to talk about and make predictions on. So keep it locked here to the DNVR YouTube channel. Subscribe, help us out there. Uh, we appreciate y'all, and you'll see us in the next video very soon.